Life Audio. Hello. Thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for our lives. I'm your host, Quinice Petway, and after this short word from our sponsor, we'll dive into today's Bible verse, Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. Our world can feel chaotic and uncertain, but we don't have to live enslaved to fear. Christ has promised you and I his peace, and throughout scripture, he has provided powerful truths and practical steps to help us experience greater freedom. I'm Jennifer Slattery, lead host of the Faith Over Fear podcast, inviting you to join me and my team as together we learn how to starve our fears and grow our faith. Subscribe at lifeaudio.com. Today's Bible verse is Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result, to preserve many people alive. There's an old saying that goes, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. The premise behind this phrase is to turn the sour and bitter circumstances that life hands to us into something sweet, delightful, and even desirable. Well, Joseph, the person speaking in our verse of the day, is no stranger to lemons. Let's explore some of the backstory before diving into today's verse. When Joseph was about 17, the first few lemons that came his way were jealousy and betrayal inflicted by his own brothers. His brothers sold him into slavery due to Joseph's father, Jacob, favoring him over them. And this can be found in Genesis chapter 37, verse 3. Jacob even went as far as to make Joseph an elaborate robe. Some versions of the Bible refer to it as a coat of many colors. Furthermore, God had gifted Joseph with prophetic dreams, where Joseph revealed to his brothers that he had envisioned them bowing down to him. All of these factors infuriated his brothers. Their initial plan was to kill him. But instead, after Judah, Joseph's brother, suggested they sell him, they decided to sell him. Meanwhile, Joseph's brother stripped him of his robe and smeared animal's blood on it to show their father Jacob. And this gave Jacob the impression that Joseph was killed by a wild animal. Fast forward, Joseph's brother sold him to the Midianites. And the Midianites sold Joseph to Potiphar who was Pharaoh's official, and Potiphar and Pharaoh were in Egypt. Joseph was able to live in the house of his Egyptian master and was entrusted with everything Potiphar owned. Genesis 39, 2 says that the Lord was with Joseph and he prospered. He had found favor with Potiphar, but little did Joseph know another lemon was on the way the lemon of lying, the lemon of a false accusation. Potiphar's wife was interested in being intimate with Joseph, but he was a man of integrity. He refused her advances. This displeased, we'll call her Miss Potiphar. And she made up a lie that Joseph had tried to go to bed with her. As a result, Potiphar was very angry and Joseph was placed in prison. Meanwhile, The king of Egypt also placed his cupbearer and chief baker in the same prison with Joseph. And they were assigned to Joseph for Joseph to attend to. Now, if you remember back in Joseph's early years, he was a dreamer. And not only was he able to have dreams, but he was able to interpret dreams. So the baker and the cupbearer both had dreams that needed interpreting. And guess who was right there to interpret those dreams? You guessed it, our brother Joseph. So once they were released from prison and they were released prior to Joseph being released, they returned to Pharaoh's house. Pharaoh had dreams that needed interpreting and the cupbearer and the baker remembered Joseph from being in prison with them. And so therefore, Pharaoh summons Joseph to come and interpret his dreams. 
And Joseph was able to do that. And as a result, Genesis 41, 41 reminds us that Joseph was placed in charge of the whole land of Egypt. So now we're getting closer to our verse of the day. There was a famine in the land. Joseph's brothers and his fathers lived in Canaan and there was no food there. And so they were aware that there was food in Egypt. And so we know Joseph was in Egypt. So they had no no idea, and this is Joseph's brothers, that Joseph had risen to the status of what is equivalent to the governor of Egypt. Without letting them know who he was, Joseph provided an abundance of grain and unbeknownst to them, returned their money to their sacks. Their brothers came back a second time, or I should say Joseph's brothers came back a second time, and they were given as much food as they could carry. And once again, Joseph returned their money. Some more events transpired, and Joseph eventually revealed himself to his brothers. So once he did that, Joseph was able to travel back to Canaan to see his father, Jacob. After having the opportunity to see his son, Joseph, actually alive, Jacob dies. His brothers thought that Joseph would hold a grudge against them for all that they had done. Verses 15 through 19 in chapter 50 of Genesis say, when Joseph's brothers saw their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong which we did to him? Verse 16 says, so they sent a message to Joseph saying, your father charged before he died saying, verse 17, thus you shall say to Joseph, please forgive, I beg you, the transgressions of your brothers and their sin for they did you wrong. And now please forgive the transition or transgressions, I should say, of the servants of God, of your father. And Joseph wept and they spoke to him. Verse 18 says, then his brothers also came and fell down before him and said, behold, we are your servants. Verse 19 says, but Joseph said to them, do not be afraid for am I in God's place? So now we are right here at our verse of the day where Joseph tells his brothers, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result to preserve many people alive. And so we see God's work In Joseph's story, we see that Joseph came to this point of being able to provide for his family in the midst of a famine. After all that he went through, after being sold into slavery, being imprisoned, being falsely accused. And now we're here and he is there with his brothers, able to see that all that God has done. And we can look at our lives, and I'm sure the same is true. We can look back over and see what God has done when life has given us lemons. But let's think about our even right now. What lemons have you faced? Has someone lied on you or betrayed your trust? Did someone close to you hurt you deeply and you just can't see your way through the pain? Let's draw strength and encouragement from our brother Joseph's life that there's no situation that God can't use to work out for our good. We are also reminded in Romans 8, 28, that God works things together for our good. It says, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us that you can and will work good out of every evil intention, plan, and motives of others. Thank you for reminding us that you are the master lemonade maker. Give us strength as we face challenges and remind us that you are with us. Help us to see your hand in each of our circumstances. We thank you for 
not only Joseph's example of victory despite having enemies, but ultimately Jesus's example of overcoming evil. We know that if they are overcomers, then so are we. We praise and magnify your holy name in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your Daily Bible Verse is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? Or have you been in a season where it feels like He has been completely silent? Have you been praying for a way to learn how to hear His voice more clearly? Hey friends, I'm Rachel, host of the Hearing Jesus podcast. If you are ready to grow in your faith and to confidently step into your identity in Christ, then join me as we dig deep into God's word so you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. To listen now, go to lifeaudio.com or search Hearing Jesus on your favorite podcast app.